Rabbi Manis Friedman, hello, thank God it's Tuesday. As I just said to our audience, this is the last Tuesday of 5,784. Thank next- God. <laughs> yes, for sure. Thank God. And I got to say that, yes, this program we have announced last Tuesday that we're going to talk about what the upcoming 5,785 has in store for us. What can we be expecting? What are... Um, uh, what's in store for us is a big question, and that's that's the question that makes everybody very, very nervous because we were very optimistic last year this time, thinking that this is going to be something, um, a wonderful year with a lot of revealed goodness, and this was a year of a lot of surprises, a lot of revelations. So where's the goodness? <laughs> There has been a lot of goodness. Unfortunately, it was a little uh, camouflaged by the confusion and by the negativity. Yeah, it was a very mixed year. But the process of separating the good from the evil is, is a difficult process. None of the sages who could foresee it wanted to be here when it happens. <laughs> they were all happy to be in the past. <laughs> Although, of course, they wanted it to happen. But, um, so you see, all the problems began when we entered into the world of the tree of knowledge. I mean, we were told up front that that's what's going to happen. We're going to go down into a world where there is good and evil mixed together. The mixture of good and evil can be a very exciting challenge, but it can also be devastating, where eventually you just don't know anymore which is the good and which is the evil. And so there's a need for clarification, a need for, what is the word, the sorting out and separating the good from the evil. That's what we've been seeing for the last three years. Layer after layer, where we got to the increasingly worse evil and increasingly better good. So, if, uh, you know, you go back to the beginning of COVID. Yeah, there was confusion. Medical confusion. What is it? Where did it come from? What's the right medicine? Should we take it? Take the, 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 the injection. Don't take the injection. It's the best thing. It's the worst thing. We've never had such a crisis of health. Then it went into politics. Then it went into education. Then it went into gender. Until we're left (laughs) with no concept whatsoever of right and wrong. Killing, raping, murdering, burning babies Is that wrong? It's not so simple. (laughs) Depends on the context. Um, Fighting a war, protecting yourself, defending yourself, killing the enemy. No, that's wrong. (laughs) You've never had such chaos in the head. On the other hand, with every passing month, people became more sensitive, more considerate, not in the headlines, not in the public view, but everywhere in the world. People are talking about God much more, people are praying much more. 
people are reaching out to each other out of genuine, you know, unsincere concern. So we're getting much, much better. Godliness is becoming far more popular, identifiable, comfortable. People who would never say, thank God, now are saying, thank God, with the help of God, God willing. So the world has polarized to the extreme. What's coming in the coming year? All the miracles that we've been ignoring, <laughs> the miracles that have been happening, which we didn't really make a big deal about. Three hundred missiles or projectiles coming from Iran, thousands coming from Hezbollah, thousands coming from Gaza. And no one is killed. How do we not? <laughs> how do we not rate that as miracles of biblical proportion, if not greater? A missile landed in Tel Aviv or just outside. It was aimed for Tel Aviv. Two people were hurt by shrapnel. <laughs> <laughs> this is... So, really what we're seeing is this. Every time Israel does the right thing, it is miraculous. Literally, I mean, even the enemy are calling it miraculous. This pager thing with the <laughs> ah, they said it was five years in preparing. Even so, it is such a delicate operation. The slight, slightest variation, one thing goes wrong, <laughs> pardon the expression, and it all blows up in your hands. So, Every time Israel acts courageously, com uh, with confidence, the miracles are just endless. And every time we hesitate, and every time we play politics, and every time we go by the Geneva Convention morality, which is designed for babies in a playground, doesn't go well. In a great, to a great degree, when we do the right thing and the miracles happen, the world is a little more accepting. There's, a little, there's far less cri criticism or condemning. It's almost like they begrudgingly have to say, yeah, well, look, they are the chosen people, so what do you expect? <laughs> so when we act like the chosen people and we get the results, of acting like the chosen people. The other benefit is the world says, yeah, even our enemies say, well, yeah, yet they're the chosen people. On the other hand, every time we don't act in a Jewish fashion, when we play the game of politics, not only are there no miracles, but the avalanche of criticism and condemnation and hatred just overwhelming. So it's so clear, it is so obvious to anyone who's paying attention. And the people paying attention most <laughs> are the terrorists. They know how hard they're trying. And in their mind, there's no question 
the God of Israel directs their missiles to where they don't do any harm. There's no other explanation in their mind. And therefore, it's so confusing to them when we don't attribute it to God. They can't understand that. So really, that's what we should be doing. We should be bringing the world's attention. Did you notice <laughs> how God is protecting us? That would be great. What's coming in the coming year? The, the cleansing process, the uh, sorting out process, separating the good from the evil, it's, it's still got a little ways to go. So there'll be more of that. But really the bulk of the news of the coming year is that goodness has finally replaced the confusion. God has become real. People will start getting their lives under control. The evil is done, it's finished. The final surprise is who is going to admit, who among the bad guys is going to admit their mistakes and who are going to try to cover it up and have to be exposed, but it's all going to be exposed. It's already started here in America. The swamp is much uglier than we thought, and it's coming apart. It's destroying itself. It's going to be ugly, but it'll be a relief. Like lancing an ugly boil. Rabbi Friedman, if you don't mind, I want to point out a really obvious miracle that for four years we had the blessing of hearing you on Russian speaking radio in America addressing our community. I don't know how that came about, but I every day view it as a miracle, as an open miracle that we get to hear your wisdom. And for four years, we've been from the start hearing what you are saying right now. It's all documented. We have a whole channel dedicated to it. And anybody who wants to see it for themselves, it's archived from, from the start in, uh, in consequential order. And you've been saying everything you've been saying all along, and all of it has been exactly as you've been saying it. Four years ago, the separation of um, darkness and light, which has started, and I remember that particular program, it was right before Shavuot, um, the first Shavuot after, during COVID, that we were first time allowed to go to the synagogues and pray. And when I came there and told it to the community, they disregarded it. But now, four years later, it is so obvious to everybody. But the question is, is it obvious to everybody? Can you um, just give those, I don't know how for so many years you've been living, knowing the truth, yet living in this world of fakeness. I don't know how you're dealing with it because now people are waking up and not everybody is awoke just yet. And we have to still live here and uh, understanding where we're going, but we're still here. And it's sometimes extremely hard to know the truth and yet to be in a place where not everyone has accepted it. So, of course, my question is, how are you doing it? And uh, what advice do you have for those who are wide awake versus in this world and um, how to deal with it? Because sometimes this gets very hard. Actually, the people in the world that I deal with and live with are all coming around. So all I see is people waking up. I hear in the news about people who are not. So it's it's very helpful to see it happening. 
Uh, just came back from Memphis, Tennessee. A whole community, a whole congregation. And to them, it's not even news. Say, oh yeah, sure. Makes perfect sense. This is a project that has been going on for 3,000 years. Well, 2,000 years. As soon as exile became a reality, we realized that this is what's going on. Living in Israel with a temple under King Solomon, with all the prophets teaching and inspiring and the miracles that were... We didn't see the evil at all. But it existed. So for us to actually see it, God did us a big favor and spread us all over the world so that we get a good taste of every kind of evil. <laughs> and boy, have we had... <laughs> <laughs> we had a huge meal seven courses, not five, of every kind of exile, of every kind of challenge, good and evil mixed together. When we thought the Hellenists were right, Greek culture seemed to be the truth. Many Jews confused it for Judaism. And then the Renaissance and Napoleon's uh, new world, new age, seemed like, oh, this is the epitome of Judaism. And then, of course, communism, the other Jewish religion. <laughs> <laughs> and it really was. So we went from... All, all of these evils that were masquerading as good and all the good of Judaism that we thought was terribly old-fashioned and, and, and politically incorrect. And, uh, and now we realize it, it's so brilliant. It's so, it's so correct. So that's, that's what we've been doing for 2,000 years. And our prayer has always been, sometimes subconsciously, but our prayer has always been, we're floundering, we're confused, we're bouncing off the walls, one philosophy and another, one, one system and another, experimenting, getting hurt, being devastated, being disillusioned, falling deeper and deeper into the into the swamp of amorality. Nothing is really true. No one way is better than the other. The 60s. Everyone has their own truth. Try it. You'll like it. If you don't like it, try something else. Life is one big experiment, and no one knows right from wrong. No one can say for sure what you must do, what you mustn't do. It's all just a big experiment. We're just evolving, and whatever, you know, whatever we evolve into, well, that's what we're going to be. So we really don't even have to have an opinion, we don't have to have beliefs, we don't have to have a moral code. Let's just go with the flow. And of course, that created all sorts of grief. People don't understand each other, don't know each other, can't rely on each other. Society falls apart, families fall apart. Just absolute chaos. All along our prayer was, why doesn't a created being know its creator? How did that happen? How can God be the master of the universe and we have no idea. It's our universe. It's the universe we're living in. How do we not understand our own world? How do we not understand ourselves? So modern psychology came along 
to explain us to us disastrous it led to self-indulgence it led to narcissism it led to entitlement it led to children who can't accept a single instruction from their parents without rebelling more chaos right but i think our prayers are finally going to start producing results in the coming year what we pray for on every Rosh Hashanah and every Yom Kippur, may every created being know its creator. May every formed uh, being know who formed it. May every designed creation know who the designer is. That's all we really need. Then the confusion goes away then the good is good and the bad is bad. And when the bad is just bad, nobody's interested. Might as well disappear. So this is what we're going to see. The, the evil is going to become uglier, but much less of a challenge. You find something really ugly, you throw it out. You don't make a deal, a big deal at it. It won't be a discussion, it won't be, it won't be a debate. It'll be ugliness, get rid of it. And we will be rid of it. Rabbi Friedman, that's the big question. Who is going to get rid of it? Because um, my biggest question right now, that for over a month, we have known, it's from, yeah, from end of August, we have known that... Um, a Department of Homeland Security, it comes from a very reliable source, that 300,000 migrant children are missing, gone without a trace. And we all know about it. And who's doing what about it? So this is my question. We know the evil is happening, but who's going to do something about it and how? Well, the ultimate goodness is that we don't have to do anything about it. It will eat itself. It will destroy itself. Because that's what happens to absolute evil. You don't have to shoot it. Just watch it die and then discard it. <laughs> um, if we have to fight it, then we're still, we're still in, in, in the same trouble that we have been. So... Evil people have no capacity for cooperation. Only holiness can cooperate. Because in holiness, there's a little bit of, an, uh, of a humility. And that little bit of humility allows for cooperation. I can admit that together we'll do a better job than I can do myself. Evil does not admit to such a thing. So evil people do not cooperate. They manipulate each other, but there's no cooperation. So when the evil becomes pure evil, it'll turn on itself. Evil people will kill evil people, will expose evil people, will accuse evil people. They will accuse each other. It will sicken the vast majority of you know, I think the best example is the Torah says when you come to the land that I'm giving you, the holy land be careful that you behave in a holy fashion because the land the earth does not tolerate immorality or ugliness it will spit you out not somebody is going to push you out the land itself will will vomit you out. That's the Holy Land. Today, in the near future, every land, every little piece of geography is intolerant of evil. So those who are evil 
will be rejected, will be spit out by the land itself. Nature will not tolerate ugliness. It's, it's, it's going to be magnificent to watch. <laughs> King David says in the Psalms, in Tehillim, Truth will sprout from the earth. You won't have to quote an angel. You won't have to quote some heavenly voice. The earth itself will say, out. If you can't be good, Get off of me. <laughs> that, that's a literal, that's not a poetic sen sentiment. Nature has tolerated evil far too long. But all the mitzvahs that we've invested into the world, all the seeds of godliness, are going to sprout and they will not tolerate evil. So evil will just have to go. And not evil people necessarily, just the evil in the people. So watch and see how people you really despise because they've always been evil will suddenly become forces for good with the same energy and the same enthusiasm they had for evil they will suddenly become warm and enthusiastic about goodness and some of the people who pass themselves off as good are going to be exposed as despicably evil so we could sit around and gloat and say, <laughs> oh I knew it I knew it no we don't know it it's going to come as a maybe pleasant surprise but big surprise because the most hidden good is the greatest good and the most hidden evil is the ugliest when it comes out, whew, and we see it already. What are they saying about celebrities? I'm not sure I even want to know. Yeah, I'm afraid it's going to come out and, um, and it's going to be so awful. Because exactly four years ago, they were the leaders of the world. Um, just like money was the it thing of the world. But from what you just said, so you think there's a chance that the 200 radio stations that George Soros just bought will have um, Torah education on them and not, <laughs> and not political games on them? <laughs> I, either they will broadcast goodness or they will cease to exist. Amazing. Rabbi Friedman, how do we know that this is it? That, that, that this, this is the moment because last year this time we were so optimistic and positive and looking forward and a week later we were so devastated and um, a few weeks later and we all know what we're talking about October 7th how do we know that how can we keep this optimism and positivity and not be scared because there is an element of PTSD from last year. That, that's, that's a... I'm not sure that there is any PTSD. I'm not sure the world is traumatized of paralyzed, which what PTSD would do. I think we're horrified. I think we're a little uh, numbed by the pure evil of it. 
it's it's staggering we're speechless there are no words there are no words you know there's still plenty of footage from October 7th that they're not showing because what good would it do it, it would just it would just numb the brain like how can evil be so evil so yeah we're better off not seeing it but I, I don't think the, the people, the silent majority, were speechless. I don't think we're damaged, which is also interesting, strange, different. Maybe because we've seen so much in movies and simulated evil. It's a shock that it's actually going on in reality, but those images, we've seen them. We've seen horrors. We called it entertainment. It's regrettable. Especially children. How much violence, how much gore, how much, how much torture, evil, bloodshed are, are kids exposed to? I don't, I think teenagers, the average teenager in the world, if they saw those videos, they wouldn't be shocked. They would not be shocked. It's what they watch all the time. Only this time it's in real life and they can't tell the difference. So what has been happening in the, in the past couple of years is we knew the path we were on. We had no idea the extent of it. Yes, the good and the evil are going to separate. And we thought people telling lies are going to start telling the truth. And that would be nice, right? <laughs> oh, we discovered that that is the tip of the iceberg. So it came in layers, in waves. You can literally, my memory is not that good, but you can literally track it. One wave, the next wave, the third wave. You can actually number them and see how the 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 goodness and the evil in each wave is of a completely different quantity and quality. It's not just a little more, a little more. It's, it's, it's stuff we never... We're over the shock. We're making jokes about it. The president of a university says it's not necessarily evil if you burn babies in a microwave oven. And, 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 and this is not fiction. If we were a little more sensitive, our, bla our brains would explode. Robert Friedman, unfortunately, that has been going on for the longest time when it comes to abortion. Is it is it moral to get rid of a baby on the six weeks of its life, 24th, full term? Uh, what is the moral thing to determine? <laughs> when is it the moral thing to terminate life? I mean, when is it still acceptable? And we're still having these conversations. And um, a lot of people are... And that's know, a good example. That's a good example. 20 years ago, 30 years ago, people who were pro-abortion, did they ever suspect that it would turn out to be kill the baby no matter what age it is? And if you went long and the baby delivers naturally, kill it. Did anybody pro-abortion ever think it would go that far? 
And it's not just a little further. It's a completely different dimension. Just kill the baby. No more argument. It is a baby. It's not a baby. I don't care. I don't want it. Kill it. Is that is that what the pro-abortion people were arguing 30 years ago? No. They thought they were being moral. So now killing the baby full term is moral? Try that one on. So yeah, the, the evil has has shocked us. We thought we knew what was evil. And that anything worse couldn't possibly happen. Well, now we've seen the full extent. So how bad is evil? It is so bad that it destroys itself. You can't get worse than that. The sooner the better. <laughs> Rabbi Friedman, thank you so, so much. Thank you for always putting things in perspective for us, in a good perspective, in the right perspective, in the, yeah. in the, in the true perspective. So practically speaking, so that we're not sitting back and being spectators, today and tomorrow, every occasion to give charity to show God that we still believe in his world and we know it's going to be good and if we can help make it a little better and ease people's discomfort uh, when they need food or they need shelter or they need medical help whatever the charity is if we can create a flood of charity in these last two days before Rosh Hashanah It would, it would be, it would be a compliment to the human race. This is how we react when things are very bad. Imagine how we're going to react when things are very good. So yes, everybody give a little more tzedakah today, tomorrow, a number of times during the day, at every opportunity, and Every act of tzedakah helps this process move along quickly so that the next year can be a celebration of the achievement because the task has been accomplished. Can't wait to see that happening, Rabbi Friedman. Amen. Amen. May we all see this as so the sooner the better. And this is definitely something that we can help along and look forward to and hopefully witness very, very soon. Rabbi Friedman, thank you so, so much. Thank you for all the wisdom that you give us and for the clarity and for the real true goodness that we can channel within each one of us. That is the most important thing. And I think it's been spreading and uh, you are just an amazing person who is leading this um, for us and for the rest of the world. Thank you so, so much. And of course... Uh, you you did this to me <laughs> and then you created you created this miracle and it's completely to your credit well i'm 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 a good messenger <laughs> yeah Baruch Hashem. Thank God. Very, very honored to be one. And um, thank you for all the opportunities and thank you for um, for everything that you do every second of every day. And of course, a very sweet year to you, your family, um, and to everyone in the world. So thank you so, so much. And um, looking forward to all this um, predictions, all this optimism coming true by our next program at least not later <laughs> see you next year see you next year thank you so so much